Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Dusseldorf in Germany. Dusseldorf is an international business and financial centre known for its fashion and trade fairs and is the seventh largest city in Germany. Did you know that? In 2012 it was also voted the sixth most livable city in the world. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive coverage of Dusseldorf, but just enough to give me a feeling of the place. I'm just going to scratch the surface. The question at the end will be, do I feel so comfortable here? Could I live here? I just walked through an area called Little Tokyo and I think I'm walking through Little Beijing now. Everything's Chinese. Dusseldorf was effectively flattened during World War II. I read somewhere online that only two buildings in the city actually survived without any damage. That's why most of Dusseldorf looks modern, because it is. However, when you see buildings like this, this is like the, the Justice Ministry. These have either been restored or rebuilt using the original building plans. They look fantastic. Well guys, I've got a confession to make. I've only been here two hours so far and already I'm starting to fall in love with Dusseldorf. It is a real eye-opener. I thought Dusseldorf, industrial city, blah, 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 but it's actually very beautiful, very beautiful indeed. And I can see why it was one of the world's great livable cities several years ago. Right, I'm going down to have a look at the River Rhine because this is a very disturbing sight. That sandy area on the other side of the river isn't actually the riverbank, it's the river bed. The uh, river Rhine is so low, it normally has about two meters of water between the bottom of the barges and the riverbed. It's down to about 30 to 40 centimeters in places. Germany is having a real tough time with this drought at the moment. In fact, some of the barges are having to reduce the amount of cargo they're carrying just so they can negotiate the river. This is the Rhine Ufer Promenade. It's just restaurant and bar after restaurant and bar after restaurant and bar for about a whole mile. The River Rhine is like the Clapham Junction for barge spotting. Right above us we have got the Rhine Turm and I've written this down on a bit of cardboard so I get it right. It's 789 feet or 240 meters tall. It has spectacular views of the whole area 
And I think we should go up there. You don't have to have a fear of heights, but it helps. When I was trying to find my way to the entrance to the tower, I went past a rather posh looking function that's being held back there. It's got a fence around it so you can't even see inside. It's obviously for uh, not for outsiders. So when I was up on the tower, I kind of had a look down, I went, huh? And if my translation's right, it's the State Council building. So I think we should go back and have a closer look because some of the cars outside are absolutely amazing. My invitation must have gotten lost. I was actually making some of the drivers over there a bit nervous. They kept looking at me very carefully. I was showing way too much interest in their cars, so I decided to leave. Well, it's a new day and we are looking for the number one tourist attraction in Dusseldorf, according to TripAdvisor. And that is Classic Remise. And that is a car museum. And it's the sort of car museum that people go to when they're not interested in cars. It's that spectacular. And it should be somewhere just down here. I was wondering why access into this was actually free. I now get it. It's not actually a museum. It's a classic car sales yard. And they're all for sale. Unfortunately, I don't think I can stretch my credit card far enough for one of these. This Aston Martin here is 2.2 million euros. I was gonna ask for an overdraft extension on my bank account, but I don't like the color.
I'm not really a petrol head, but I found that place fascinating and I fully understand what's going on now. It's a former railway roundhouse. The lower floor is full of cars for sale, classic cars, sports cars, and uh, there's some beautiful machines there. Dotted around the place are mechanics who will do repairs, who will do upgrades to all classic cars. So you could take your Aston Martin there for an MOT or a wheel alignment, and you could also buy a Lamborghini while you're waiting. So what did I think of Dusseldorf? Well, surprisingly better than expected. At the start of this video, I mentioned that they had been voted the sixth most livable city about 10 years ago. Even though they're not in the running now, I can still see where it came from. And the thing that won it for me was the other day when I was down at, uh, at the River Rhine, after a hard day at work, hundreds of people were sitting there in the sunshine watching the sunset and then there was people practicing their Latin dance moves. Now I've lived in Glasgow for 30 years and I can only compare it to Glasgow and I cannot see the good people of Glasgow after a day in the office sitting on the banks of the River Clyde watching the sunset or practicing their samba on Sucky Hall Street. Yeah, there's something about, um, there's something about Dusseldorf that I really like and, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but yes, it's livable. I would give it an eight. I would even give it an eight and a half because the weather has been fantastic. I'm feeling generous today. So eight and a half out of 10 for Dusseldorf. It is a lovely place and I think I will be back. Anyway, everyone, thanks very much for coming with me on this little adventure in Dusseldorf and I hope to see you next time.